Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're having a good day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name's Taylor. I live in Baltimore, Maryland, and on my YouTube channel here, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting and spinning. In this video, I have to share with you my new updated 2021 top 10 favorite sweaters. In this video, I'm sharing many, many new sweaters that were not previously featured in my top 10 video. There are two repeats and I included those to talk more about sweater construction and the differences in fit. So I hope that you'll join me through the duration of this video. If you enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me so much in growing my channel here on YouTube. And if you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. So let's just dive in. The first sweater I have to share is a heavily modified version of Kate Davies Ducat sweater. I knit this using Pearl Soho's mohair silk yarn held double. I believe I used the recommended needle to get gauge. And I heavily modified the sleeves by marling colors to fade. And I did no shaping to create this bell sleeve. This is a favorite sweater of mine to wear in the summer and fall because it's so lightweight. It is nice and warm for those chilly evenings. It's not super warm though because the knit is so open as you can tell by seeing through it there. But I really did enjoy knitting this. I find that the slippery yarn is not my favorite to knit. I am a wooly wool yarn girl and so I love the stickiness of wool on my needles. I did find knitting the sleeves quite tedious, not because of the pattern, but because of the yarn used. It's just so slippery. And I like to knit with those small circumference nine inch needles that are um, Chiagu, they're metal. So when I'm knitting a slippery yarn on metal needles, I don't enjoy the experience all that much. So that's one thing I can say about knitting this project that really has nothing to do with the pattern or construction, but just a little bit of my experience. And this is the Ducat sweater by Kate Davies, but mostly me, because this is very different looking than the original. Next up, we have Andrea Mowry's Wool and Honey. I was a bit late to the party on this one, but I'm really, really glad I knit this sweater. I used Green Mountain Spinnery's two-ply fingering weight yarn. I believe it's called Sock de Lana or Lana, something like that. It's one of my favorite yarns, and this is one of my favorite sweaters I've ever knit. And I believe I followed the instructions for the size small on the yoke, and it gives a very deep set yoke here. So it almost fits kind of like a dolman. And I did modify this sweater with stitch markers at each side. I decreased every few rounds. I believe I simply did the math where I knew how many inches I wanted to continue knitting and I knew how many inches I wanted the circumference to be and then I factored how frequently I needed to decrease in order to meet the circumference given the distance between where I started decreasing and where I would ultimately finish. If that makes any sense. If I look closely at it though, it looks like I I decreased every sixth round, if that helps. I'll give you a shot of the back because you can see that the motif is all the way around. It's a lovely, lovely garment. I can't get enough wear out of this and I, I could see myself knitting another one of these in my lifetime if anything were to happen to this one. Next up we have Ella Gordon's Ola Yoke, which was featured in my previous top 10 video. It is probably gonna live in my top 10 forever because it is a gorgeous design. If you don't know, I am an Ella Gordon simp. I love everything she designs and I uh, knit this a little bit longer in the body. I actually have to step back for you to see. So it's almost like a tunic length, to be honest. This is my first time knitting a bottom up sweater. So I, I really overdid it. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know exactly how long I was making this when I made it, but I have no regrets. It's one of my favorite sweaters to uh, wear when I ride my bicycle because when I'm hunched forward, it never rides up even close to my waistband. So it's very warm for that reason. I do always layer a shawl if I'm leaving the house in the winter because that boat neck is nice and airy. And I've never knit a sweater constructed in this way. Basically, once you get to the area where you join the sleeves, you do a little bit of what's similar to a raglan shaping, and then you do the color work. And there are decreases worked into the color work between these motifs. As you can see, the distance between these two motifs 
of the flower and the tree or leaf, whatever it is. It's consistent, whereas the shape of this motif is getting narrower and narrower. So it does lay on the body in a very nice way. Um, unlike other yoke designs, which I can go into a little bit later in the video, but I wanted to show you my variation of Ella Gordon's Ola yoke. I chose these colors myself. I love them so much. And I'm a huge fan of Shetland yarn and Shetland makers. Next up, I have a top down color work design. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> this is a design by Isabel Kramer. I knit it using my own hand spun and I alternated skeins for the main color so that I wouldn't get the color pooling effect of the natural fiber um, that was slightly variation in color. So I alternated skeins to make it nice and even looking. The dark brown is a natural color fleece as is the light brown. So it's fully undyed. And I really love this sweater. I don't wear it a lot. I don't know why. I think I was a little self-conscious of the way that the yoke, you can kind of see where the yoke and the sleeve kind of like where the yoke stops and the sleeve starts. There's some difference in tension here. I don't know what it's about. Something, I don't know if I twist it. Can you see that one round? It's just, there's something weird about it. This also has a bit of a deep yoke. I've talked a lot about my armpits in previous videos and I do like sweaters with deep yokes so that my deodorant just doesn't get stuck into all of the stitches and it stays nice and clean a little bit longer with that extra room there. I had a lot of fun knitting this sweater and it brings so much joy to turn my hand spun yarn into a fully finished garment. Here we have my last hand spun sweater of the video. This was made with Cormo fleece. Actually, my previous sweater was also spun from a Cormo fleece, um, but this is wool that I hand combed and spun into a two ply. This is a braid of Malabrigo fiber that I spun for the contrast color. I love the lace detail and cabling of this Caitlin Hunter design. I did modify it to be a full long sleeve sweater with stockinette for the body, which was my choice. And she gives the option to do this eyelet pattern for the body and sleeve or some other pattern I didn't select, but I decided I wanted the eyelets to rest between the two cables that I would continue down the sleeve and the remaining part of the sweater to be stock in that. So I did heavily modify this pattern, but rather simply, I just kept knitting for the sleeve. I think I offered some decreasing after the elbow. I can't recall the name of the sweater, but I will leave it in the show notes below. I think it is a showstopper. This is the second sweater that I featured in my previous top 10 videos, and it is the last repeat. Again, I can't recall the designer or the name of this pattern, um, but I will leave it in the show notes below. The reason I wanted to feature this sweater in addition to Ella Gordon's bottom-up sweater is that they're both bottom-up yoked sweaters. However, this one in particular, it doesn't do any shaping within the motif. All of the shaping is done within, I think, a single row of increases. And I just have to say, this is not my favorite method of knitting a yoked sweater. I find that it hugs rather tight around my shoulders. That might just be because of my gauge or my choice of yarn or both. But I just find that the sweater, although it looks rather nice and I mean, it fits quite well, it's just hugging the outside of my shoulder in a way that's not super comfortable. And if I reach my arms overhead and I just live my life, I have to adjust it a lot more than other sweaters that I knit. So it's not, it's not a deal breaker for me. I still love to wear this sweater, especially when I want to look really polished and neat, but I don't love the way it feels around my shoulders here. I also knit this with one of my favorite yarns. It's called Joseph and Ani. It's made by Abundant Earth Fiber out of Washington State. And if you've watched my videos for a long time, you know that I love to purchase 
yarn directly from the mills that produce it. So Abundant Earth Fibers, Jameson and Smith, uh, Green Mountain Spinnery, um, another, those are, those are places that I buy my yarn directly. I also shop online a lot at stores like Tolt Yarn and Wool out of Washington State. They have a great selection of lovely, lovely yarn. So if you've been wondering where I purchase my yarn, that's generally where I get it. This is one of my newly finished sweaters. It is another version of Kate Davies Ducat sweater, which I knit using Elsa Wool Woolen Spun Fingering Weight Yarn in the light gray color. If you haven't checked out Elsa Wool online, I would highly recommend their yarns. It's gorgeous. It's Cormo, it's lovely, and it's quite affordable. I held it together with Isegar or Isayar, I'm not sure how to say it still, um, mohair silk, which is one of my favorite mohairs. It's probably, I mean, I'd love to try other mohair silk blends, but it's one of my favorites. It's, it's just so soft and it doesn't shed like other mohairs tend to do, at least in my experience. And this is the color six. I modified the sleeves in a different way. I continued to knit them straight and then I decreased uh, every other stitch for one row, knit straight. I did that a second time and then I did a twisted rib for about an inch or so before binding off. So it has this lovely little kind of poof sleeve. I'm actually not sure of the correct name for that sort of sleeve, but it gives a little bit of a poof at the end. I ran out of mohair before finishing the bottom. So I did do a contrast bottom hem and collar here. It's a very subtle element to this sweater. And I really, really love this. It's so warm and it's so cozy. Next up, we have my original design that I call the O-Knot Cardigan. If it's kind of like a jacket with the popped collar feel in the back, it has this sort of dramatic kind of neck thing, collar thing. I put buttons all the way up and I will unbutton it for you. I wish I knit a larger size. It feels snug with a sweater beneath it, um, but it fits really comfortably with just a t-shirt or a tank top. I knit this using Harrisville Designs Watershed Yarn and it has pockets. And there's a gorgeous cable motif on the back side. So this is the O-Knot Cardigan. Next up is Michelle Wong's Bro Cardigan. I feel a little bit like Goldilocks and the three cardigans because the first one is a little bit tight and this one is a little bit big. I did knit the smallest size. I must not have hit gauge exactly right, even though it seemed that I did at the start because uh, it's just rather big in the arms. I can tell by the photograph too that I did fewer repeats of the cable chart up the side. So there must have been a difference in my row gauge, which I might not have measured, I don't even know. Which is important, I think, when you're knitting cable charts like this. But I do love this sweater. It is very warm. Whenever I wear it, I forget to throw on my coat before I leave the house. So that really speaks to its warmth. And I knit this using Green Mountain Spinnery's Organic Vermont Worsted Weight Yarn. It's um, a Perindale fiber, so it's a little rustic and um, not the softest to skin, but it is an outerwear garment, so I'm loving that. I want to show you the gorgeous cables on the back. And I really hit a good stride one week on this when I took some time off work and I just continued that momentum in the following weeks. And this took a lot less time than I thought it would originally. So I'm really enjoying it now. And it's a great piece to layer. I have no issues putting sweaters under this cardigan. This is the Yell Cardigan by Marie Wallen. Boy, this was a labor of love. So many stitches. I chose my own colors throughout. I knit the majority of the color work here using Jameson and Smith. I also had this pop of blue from Elemental Effects with their two-ply Shetland yarn. And I used also uh, Beach and Bouche, uh, I think Petite Lamb's Wool for the green. And this pale color, this taupe color was, um, it's a Norwegian yarn. 
Ralma Fino Garn. So I did combine many different yarns to create this. I love it so much. The front collar here does roll. I think it'll continue to do that forever until I finally tack it down with a ribbon on the inside. And one day I'll get to that. I still have not yet. It's knit from the bottom up with a steek all the way up to the neck and you steek the armholes as well. So there's a seam here that does make it a little bit bulky. I wish I had made this part of the sweater a little bit wider, uh, maybe just knit for a few more rows than I did. And I modified the sleeves by not doing any decreases. So it gives it a little bit of a bell kind of retro feel um, just because I didn't decrease for the sleeves. And I also, instead of knitting back and forth for the short row shaping, I would break my yarn and just slide my stitches back to the other end and just knit across for every round. So I had a few, few more ends to weave in for this project, but I really like the way too I modified the short rows so that the motif, you can see the motif matches up perfectly for this and then it changes for each motif it's like symmetrical within each motif i just felt very particular at the time and i felt like i needed to change it up to be a little bit more perfect looking a little less disjointed within the motifs so that's the only modification i made there other than the sleeves Last up is a sweater I did not knit myself, but it is hand knit. I found this at the thrift store and it had so many holes. I tell you what, it had more holes than I thought it did when I brought it home, but no worry. I just pulled out from my stash here. It's cruel embroidery thread. This is wool thread that I used to stitch together, basically through duplicate stitch, the areas that were broken from moth damage. Um, you can see there's a little bit of fraying right at the edge here. I might just felt that back into place, but I essentially just duplicate stitch. You can't even really tell where I've done it, but I duplicate stitch over the areas that were broken to mend it back into place and just tried to hold the wool in its original shape. Um, there's other areas too that I did this. Maybe I can find the threads on the inside. I know I had to mend it in almost all the colors because of the damage, but because it's wool, you can barely tell. Um, I did remove a lot of the pilling on the outside. You can see there's pilling on the inside I forgot to address. I did switch out the buttons as well. It had silver metal buttons that I thought were just not the best look, and I switched them out for some nice wooden buttons. And I feel like I really made this cardigan my own. I brought it back to life. It was, it was in some critical condition. And I share this with you because you might not yet be a knitter, but you can still find great knitwear out there. And if you find the thread to mend, you might be able to build a wardrobe of some fabulous knits. So that's it for this video, sharing my top 10 plus this bonus sweaters and cardigans. I hope that you all have a lovely day. Again, if you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.